Where you're going? Honey. Yeah. Yeah. Who was playing that phonograph? I was. Yeah. Uh, well, don't do it again. You know better. My customers don't want used goods. If I catch you doing it again, I give you both a good licking. Good morning, Mr. Schultz. Good morning. I want a sack of sugar, maybe. That's a nice dress, isn't it? You keep your hands off me, Peter Schultz. Oh, I didn't mean no harm. I like you. Maybe that's all. I don't want you to like me. Is there anything else besides sugar? Uh, I was going to ask you if I couldn't come to visit you tonight for a while. Well, you can't. Tonight or any other night. I don't like that fellow. I don't know 
everybody who does does, except my father. Hey, Granny, look, come here, quick. Right here tonight, you will see that has ever visited your fair city. The New York representative critics have proclaimed this show to be the greatest aggregation of merrymaking mirth provokers since Shakespeare was barred from Avon. You will see Marklin Webb, those outstanding and incomparable artists, direct from a three year tour of the foremost Audible City. I can say unquestionably and without fear of contradiction that this is the most sensational act that has ever been presented on any stage. You will see those happy, hilarious, hip-swinging hula dancers direct from the shores of Langara's Hawaii. And that great big Indian chief, Pawpaw, in thrilling dances of his forefathers. And other attractions too numerous to mention. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no admission into the tent. Our sole aim is to entertain you. And remember, folks, the show starts sharply at 8 o'clock. So be there, 8 o'clock sharp, and see this great show. Remember, folks, it's free. Absolutely free. Give me two in the front row, please. Two what? I don't understand you. I beg your pardon. I took one look at you and thought I was at the folly. Anyone ever tell you you were pretty? Uh, no, sir. Well, there's a great opening in this town for an optician. I'll bet you tell that to all the girls. No, I don't. I don't know all the girls. Is there anything I can sell you? Yes, give me a box of candy. How's this? Well, haven't you got a larger box? Oh, yes. There's a larger one, but it's more expensive. Well, now, don't worry about the expense. This is for a very dear friend of mine. <clears throat> Will you do? That's all right. Have you got a little card, you know, the kind that you put on a gift box? Oh, yes. Will you write something for me? My finger's a little sore. I've been sewing all day. What shall I write? To the sweetest little girl I've ever met. Is this for your sweetheart? Yes. There you are. There you are. Oh, for me? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I shouldn't really take this, but it's awfully sweet of you, mister. Dr. Harvey. Dr. John H. Harvey. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. Our young lady is a physician. I wish to make several recommendations to you.
I advise for you, young lady, plenty of night air and long walks in the moonlight. Oh, but I'd be afraid in the moonlight all alone. Ah, but the ethics of my profession provide that the physician never leaves patient's side when his services are required. Therefore, I'll meet you tonight after the show and give you your first treatment. And it'll be some treatment. How do you know I'm going to the show? The doctor's ordered it. But my father wouldn't let me if I asked him. And he fly into a terrible rage if I went without asking him. Oh, well, that's easy. After tomorrow morning when we get back. <laughs> Will this pay for the candy? Mm-hmm. Here you are. Yeah. Why don't you come with your work? I think you to leave the store and waste your time while I'm gone. Gone. Yeah. Well, did you ever try kicking him in the face? Is there something that you want here? Why, yes. Well, why don't you get it? I will. Later on. Yeah, you can't go back to your work. And don't waste so much time. And if you disobey me again, I make you sorry for it. Wonderful. Look, he bought this and gave it to me. Who? The Indian? Of course not. Dr. Harvey. Oh, boy. Oh, hello, Doc. How are you? Hello, Doc. Hey, Doc, this car looks like it ought to be great pickings. Now, wait a minute, fellas. None of that fast stuff here. Remember the trouble we had last time? I had to spend half of my profit getting you out of the who's go. Yeah, well, how about the money that I spent getting rid of that sweet chambermaid of yours? What about her? Uh, please, mister. You go tell me where they can find the medicine show. And they look for Dr. Harvey. Medicine show is straight down the street. You can't miss it. But they missed that feller one, two, three, five times before he come hard. Oh, now, wait a minute. What's the use of arguing? All I want to know is this. Did you finally get rid of her? Yes, I got rid of her. I certainly did, Doc. She's gone for good. Good. Now, remind me Saturday night to give each of you a punch in the nose. Hey, listen, why is it you're always taking credit for everything? I you don't want on? credit what for anything. I just time, want to be talking. Listen, to why you fellas decide who gets the credit, I'm going to cross the and have a cup of java. You can't miss it. Uh, thank you. Swedish lady. Uh-huh. I hope we hit a big town pretty soon. I'm getting sick and tired of these birds. I'm telling you that. You know the last... Uh, Hello. Hilda. And up jumped the devil. Now, what are you doing here? I didn't come to marry Dr. Harvey. Oh, you did, eh? Hilda forgot. You don't mean to stand there and tell me that you didn't see Dr. Harvey back in Mitchellville. But I come here to see him. Oh, this is terrible. This is awful. Hilda, listen. Dr. Harvey is waiting for you back in Mitchellville. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Hilda. There's poor Dr. Harvey waiting for you, and here you've run out and deserted him like this. Hilda, I tell you what you've got to do. You've got to get on the train and go right back to Mitchellville. Oh, isn't it terrible that there is Dr. Harvey all alone? He's probably breaking his heart. Hilda, for good... Haven't you got any... Haven't you any feelings at all? Well, I got no money. Hey, you spend it all to come home. Oh, yeah. Well, money. Listen, I'll tell you what I'll do here. Here's some money. Get on the train and, and go back to Mitchellville. But they got no money for a hotel bill. For a hotel. Here. Hilda, here. There's money for a hotel. Now go, Hilda. Yeah. Uh, any change to that reporter? Yeah. Well, can't you give break a bill? Oh. Here, never mind. Listen, here. Here's a quarter for the porter. Go and tip. No. Look, Thank here's you. an extra dime for the billboard. Now, will you go? Go oh. on, will you? Thank you. It's so hurry now to yeah. catch the train. Yeah, don't miss Goodbye, Goodbye, Hilda. That's Goodbye. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye. And try and get hit with an automobile, Hilda. Oh, I forgot to give her a penny to buy a drinking cup. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm... A... 
Well, I just got rid of that sweet dame of yours again. No, no, yeah, I he, noticed that. No, he means I got rid of that sweet dame. I got hey, wait a minute. Now, what do you mean you got rid of it? Well, who did get rid of it? All right, fellas, all right. Thanks, both of you, very much. Why don't you settle this with boxing gloves? Well, did you got it? Yeah, it got it hard. No, he can't afford it. But it doesn't cost anything. It's free. Oh, uh, free, huh? Mm, well, all right. But remember, be back in one hour. Here, here. Yes. And don't have nothing to do with those no-good show people. Mr. Gold. Well? If you let Buddy go to the show, I'll pay for the record. Hmm. Where'd you get money, huh? Well, cash I ain't got. But you could take it out of my tape. You mind your own business. Gun. Listen, buddy. You can take off your shoes and slip out the back way. But be sure and be back from the show before Pa comes upstairs. Gee, you're a swell, sister. Hurry now. You don't let Pa hear you.
now, folks, the show is about to start. Finest entertainment you have ever had the pleasure of witnessing. There are a lot of good seats inside, but you'll have to hurry. You can't give a show out here. Hurry, 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 folks. If you want to hear the minstrel man sing, if you want to see the girls dance, you've got to go inside. They can't dance out here. It's cold, and besides, the sheriff is moody. Now, hurry up, hurry up, folks. Right inside. Maybe we can get the chief. Chief Pop ought to talk to us, and you should see his mama. What a gal. And last but not least, folks, the fire eater. Watch him eat fire and how he eats it. And he's hungry, folks. He hasn't had a thing to eat in two days. Not a thing. You like to see our show? Oh, yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put you in myself and see that you get a nice front seat. Oh, thank you, sir. Pretty little girl, too. Are you here alone? Oh, no, sir. My father's here with me. Oh, your father is here with me. Step right in, folks, and see the show. Oh, now, you're going sir. to be... Please, please. Now, you're going to be late, folks, okay, and I wouldn't sir, have you miss it. Now, go right in yourself. You'll find plenty of empty seats. Walk right in. So uh, I, I put you today, so I brought you some nice, fresh pixies. You know, uh, pixies are pretty scarce these days. Uh, I could have gotten 40 cents for them. Say, uh, this may be around. Uh, now I know why you're here and why I get pixies. Well, now that I'm here, I would like to visit with her for a while. Oh, you're kind of sweet on her, huh? Oh, I like her all right. You know, it has been awful lonesome since the old lady died. And then again, my kids ought to have a woman around. So I was thinking, maybe you would like for me and Mamie to get married, huh? Well, Peter, I don't know of anybody but would make a better husband for her. You're a good, steady fella. You've got a fine farm, huh? But right now, I can't spare her. I need her here in the store. Well, I'll put her maybe after a while when Buddy's big enough to do all the work. I'd be glad that you should marry her. That big is down there. You better get out quick. He wants to visit with you. You stay here. I go see what Mamie is doing. What's the matter? Why are you in bed, huh? Your Peter Schultz is downstairs and wants to visit with you. I've got a headache, Pa. What from? I don't know. I guess I'm just tired. Oh, uh, you're always tired. And I don't know why. Here. You see that you're not too tired. Then it's time to get up in the morning. All right, Pa. Yeah. Where is Mamie? She wasn't feeling good and she's gone to bed. <laughs> After I came all the way in, just to, to see her, I'm sorry I wasted all this gasoline. Good enough, Peter. You break your arm with that fool car. Ah, I'm a climate heater. Well, face it down here, run better, huh? Oh, Peter, look well, out. There you go. Good enough, Peter. Go for anything. Oh, 
buddy. Well, Dr. Harvey gave me a job. If I sell 12 bottles of medicine, I get 50 cents. Look at the swell coat he gave me. Oh, that's wonderful. Say, you come take my seat. I gotta go to work. Here, dear. Buddy. Thanks for going to sing a song on cute and sweet little ditty. I wrote some music in the country, and I wrote the words of the city. Now we have a cat down at our house, it swallowed a ball of yarn. And when the little kittens were born, they all had sweaters on. <laughs> Not for my wife to ride a horse, just to reduce her weight. The horse lost 40 pounds, but the wife be 98. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I am... Uh... that is of most vital interest to each and every one of you. And that subject, my good friend, is health. To those of you who have suffered from ills and aches, I come to you with the glad tidings that there is hope. Now, the science of anatomy, friends, is divided into two groups, physiology and physics. Though perhaps many of you have never taken physiology. I hold before you tonight Dr. John H. Harvey Pony Tonic and Blood Purifier at one dollar a bottle. What if I were to tell you folks that men have been brought into my presence with both legs amputated and after one teaspoonful of this liquid, skated home? <laughs> Say I was lying, I would It can't be done. Of course it can't. Mussolini couldn't do it. But I do claim this. No matter what your ailment, my friend, no matter how long you have suffered or how hopeless the case may be, Dr. Harvey's Pony Pepto Tonic and Blood Purifier at $1 a bottle will restore you to perfect health. Now, the secret formula of this world-renowned remedy was handed down from the forefathers of Chief Homantash, the greatest chief of all the Pawnee. Thank you. And now, friends, I have a testimonial here, one of the many I receive every day from a grateful public. Dear sir, if you do not pay for your overcoat by the 10th of this month, sorry folks, that's the wrong one. I know I have it, I must have it right here in this box. Here we are right here. Dear Dr. Harvey, for weeks my husband has been violently insane and imagined he was Louis the 16th. After taking two bottles of your tonic, he has greatly improved and now thinks he is only Louis the 14th. <laughs> medicine is a small and insignificant sum of one dollar. I do not claim, folks, that it will cure dandruff, falling arches, run down heels, or carburetor trouble, no. But I do say this, it is a positive remedy for the stomach, kidney, liver, cuts, burns, and bruises, pains in the small of the back, lumbago rheumatism, ailments of the eyes, ears, nose, and throat, and all points sweat. And now, friends, my agents will pass the money. Right. Come on, boys. Now for a hole. 
How do you do, Colonel? How about the bottle? Well, I don't think so. Colonel. Member Bruni? Oh, I do indeed, eh? This is double strength. <clears throat> well, what do you say? Take one. Here's I another gentleman. He takes another bottle. Another bottle sold. Hmm. One dollar, Colonel. One dollar. Well, there's a twenty dollar bill. Twenty dollar bill. All right. right. One for the medicine. Two. Three. Four. Five. Ten. And ten or twenty. I thank you, Colonel. <clears throat> Now, folks, if there's anybody else who'd like to buy hey, a remember them. Come back here. I, uh, I made a mistake. A mistake, Colonel? Yes, there's only $15 left. A mistake. All right, folks. Well, mistakes were... All right, Colonel, just let me see your money. Right, you count it over again. I wouldn't cheat you for the world. One for the medicine. All right, folks. Two, three, four, and two is six. All right, Eight, nine, ten, <coughs> eleven, twelve, uh, Oh, how do you do? Pardon me. Who's the young lady? Why, that's my daughter. Your daughter. Very pretty girl. Takes after the father. Oh. <coughs> how old is she, Colonel? Well, she's 18 now. 18. 18. And two are 20. I thank you, Colonel. You did. Well, folks, I'm a state. It makes the old young folks, and it makes the... the the wife, Sheriff. Oh, she's just fine, eh? Huh? Real nice. I have one bottle left, folks. Well, Does anybody nice begin nice to Now that perfect health has been put within the reach of all, I'm going to disclose to every lady in my audience the priceless secret of perpetual charm. Folks, right here in my hand, I have the sesame to everlasting youth and beauty. Dr. John H. Harvey's Bride of Blush. I'm not going to take up any of your time making extravagant claims for this preparation. I merely wish the privilege of proving to you that Dr. John H. Harvey's bridal blush can enhance the beauty of the fairest handiwork of Mother Nature. I'm going to ask some young lady to come out on the stage so that I may offer a practical demonstration of the miracles wrought by Dr. John H. Harvey's bridal blush. Now, which young lady will assist me? young lady is kindly consented to come upon the platform and assist me. Now, honey, don't worry. Don't worry at all. You're among friends. I think it's a fake. So do I. I know it's up here on the stage. There you are, folks. The young lady says that she got her beauty from the self-same preparation, procured from my main office in Toledo. No, no, no. No, 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 indeed. She says nothing in the world compares to Dr. Harvey's bridal blush. Soap and water is all I ever use. Me too. And look at my complexion. A little music, Chief. I'll have you fixed up in a minute. How about going out for a little automobile ride tonight, baby? Oh, I'd love to, but I couldn't. Why not? Well, you see, I came over here without my father's permission, and I'll have to get back home. Oh, that's too bad. Now, watch me closely, folks. I feel it's my duty to go and tell Mr. Go what a shameful spectacle his daughter is making for him. You're right. Absolutely right. You can't see the show, eh? No, see you. You wouldn't kid me now, would you? You like me? Oh, yes. I think you're wonderful. <laughs> you hear that, folks? The young lady says that my beauty system is absolutely wonderful. How about tomorrow? Yes, I think I can. Today, then, eh? Yes, Oh, well, I didn't really want to go up on the... Go to bed. You go home, you painted gentleman. 
You take that filth off your face. Um. Go on. Well, I only did my duty as I saw it. You certainly did. No good show people. Don't cry, Lenny. Pump up something? There's your change and there's your bottle. Call All right, down now we'll find out if you're doing very good. I'll go to the restaurant and get something to do. And if I did anything on them, then I won't run them out of town. I'll put them in jail. Good. Hello, baby. Hello. Did the old buzzard suspect anything? You mean Pa? Oh, no. I waited till I heard him snoring. Well, I hope he keeps it up. Oh, it was nice of you to send me the, uh, stocking. Did you wear Ah. Uh, oh, yes. Not bad. Not bad at all. They're awfully nice. Oh, and thank you very much for the other things. I mean, the, uh, pretties. Pretties? That's not what I asked for when I bought them. Did you wear those, too? Oh, I think we'd better drive away from here. Somebody might see us and tell my father. Okay, honey, now which road has the heaviest traffic? Well, the main street, of course. Great, we'll take this one. Now, gentlemen, the hour's getting late. We haven't got much more time to stay here. Now, I want you to keep your mind on the game and nothing else. I'm going to show you how to win some money. I'll show you how the trick's done. Now, first, I'll show it to you. Now, there's the ace. Now, all you do is keep your mind on the ace. You understand that, don't you? Now, here we are. Now, just watch the little ace. Now, then, which is the ace, sir? Take your time. You might guess it. You think that's it, do you? And really, you'd bet on that, too, wouldn't you? How much would you bet? Oh, twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars. 
Well, now, let's see if you'd win. <clears throat> that isn't it, is it? That isn't it. So, consequently, that must be it. Now, there you are. Do you see how easy it is? If you had to hide your money up, you'd have won that time, wouldn't you? Now, I'm going to show it to this gentleman here. Yeah, I'll show it to you, uh, if you don't mind, Mr... Oh, pardon me. What is uh, your name? Scruggs. Mr. Scruggs. And your name? Perkins. Perkins. Shake hands with Mr. Scruggs, Mr. Perkins. Now, Mr. Suggs, <clears throat> I'm going to show it to you. There's the ace. You all see it, gentlemen, the little ace. Now, then. Which one do you think it is? Mr. Spuds? <coughs> Scrubs. Oh, Scrubs. Well, we all make mistakes. That's the reason we put uh, rubbers on lead pencils. <laughs> now, take your time, and uh, which one is it? He may guess it. You did. <coughs> yes, sir. You think that's it? And you'd better, of course, be in a sporty man. How much would you bet? Fifty dollars. Is that so? Well, now, let's see if you'd win. <laughs> that isn't it. That isn't it. So that must be it. Now, there you are, gentlemen. You see, gentlemen, I'm not cheating. You can win, can't you? Now, we'll try it once more. But this time, gentlemen, if you have any money to put down, let's make it a good bet. Now, remember, gentlemen, you've got as much chance as I have. Now, here we go, gentlemen. Remember, watch the ace. <coughs> Just a minute, gentlemen. There's the sheriff, I think. He wanted to come in here and play, and I wouldn't let him. Just a minute. Say, shall we look at him? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Well, there it is. Look at this corner. Okay. Gentlemen, I was right. It was the sheriff, and I wouldn't let him come in. Now, I'm afraid this will have to be the last game. You see? Now, remember, gentlemen, the ace is the thing. And don't forget it, gentlemen. The ace. The ace is the thing. Now, here we are. Remember, get your money down, because this is the last time tonight you'll be able to bet. Now, try and win all you can for me, gentlemen. Now, watch it. Now, watch it. And watch it very close. Oh, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> I'm a little bit nervous on account of the sheriff. <laughs> now remember, gentlemen, here's the ace. Now watch the ace. Now watch it, gentlemen. There it is. There we are, gentlemen. Now which one is the ace? It's that one. Hurry up. You think it is, eh? Hey? Yes. All right, put your money down. Yes. All right, if you got your money down. Sure. All right, <clears throat> hurry up, gentlemen. Remember, there will be no more tonight. Are you finished, gentlemen? Well, let's see. There's the ace, gentlemen. I'm sorry, but there's where you lose. See, there's the chance you take. Now, gentlemen, remember, that is the way out. I'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, gentlemen, and thanks for your time. I just wanted to bet with it. Yeah, you must have bet the wrong one. Oh. Gee, it's nice out here, isn't it? It's beautiful. we drive up a little bit closer? I should say not. I'm going home. Oh, I know you don't mean all the things you say to me. But I like to hear them just the same. Don't mean them? Of course not. Every week we're in a different town and see different girls. 
You know you do. But, honey, you're different. No, I'm not. But I don't care. I know you'll go away and forget all about me, because I'm just another girl. But I won't forget about you. I'll always remember you. And even if I have to marry old Peter Schultz, I'll always look back on tonight and say, I was never so happy in my life. You're not angry, are you? I'm not angry, honey. Then what's the matter? We better get back to town. Oh, please don't go yet. You're leaving town tomorrow, and all I'll have after you're gone is just a remember to tonight. And I'll remember it too, sweet. But we better get back. Why? Because you're the sweetest little girl I've ever met. Did you open this door? No. Yeah. Morning, Pa. Well, who opened that door as I locked it last night, huh? Why, I... Well, Mm. What time did you get back? Ten o'clock. What? Well, I didn't get in until after eleven myself. What about that, huh? I, I went out here. What? After eleven o'clock, you go out again, huh? Well, you come with me. I teach you not to leave this house. Then I tell you to stay in here and go out at 11 o'clock with you. Well, I got you. There, there's got to be a blessing for you. You never do this. No. Good morning, Miss Wilson. 
Nice morning, huh? Yes, it is. Is there something you want, huh? Mr. Gold, I've come to perform a most unpleasant duty. Yes? But sometimes the most unpleasant things are the best for us in the long run. Well, what is it? And you know, we can't always see the wisdom of the Lord's work. Yeah, yeah, I know, but what's it about? It's about Mamie. My Mamie? Well, what about her? She was out last night with that medicine doctor. What? At Weston's place. All alone. Late at night. I thought you ought to be told, because everybody else in town knows. Yeah. Well, if everybody knows, you told them to. Get out. Get out. I never was so excited in all my life. What? To slump a hexa. And a rural 98W. Hello. This is Emil Kolf speaking. Hello, Mr. Gold. Oh, Peter. My name has been talking about you. Huh? Mamie? Mamie was asking about me? Yeah. And uh, you want to marry her, huh? <laughs> sure, sure. I, I, I would like to. Well, I've been thinking about it too, Peter. When there's no use of putting it off. Today is as good as any day, huh? Yeah, yes, sure, sure, sure. I, I wanted to put you today, but I can do that tomorrow, and maybe can learn it too, and I, I'll be right in town. No. No, don't bother. I, I crank the car up and come right out and get you. Cigarette, will you? Yeah. Hey, you know something? All right. I wish we were out of this dump. So do I. I'm beginning to feel nervous. You know, I'm afraid that three dame is going to give trouble to us before we get out of town. Give me a light. If she doesn't, here comes one that will. Uh-oh. Can you tell me where Dr. Harvey is? Dr. Harvey? Why, didn't you see him this morning? No. Well, he said he was going to say goodbye to you. Goodbye? Yeah. Yeah, sure. He left town this morning. Yeah, you see, um... Uh, he went to Mitchellville. To Mi no, no, not Mitchellville. No? No, he don't mean Mitchellville. He means, um, well, I don't know the name of the town, but anyhow, he's gone. Yeah, you... Mm, yeah, yeah, he'll be back. Oh, mm. nay, oh, oh, nay. Oh, uh, no, 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 I mean, he won't be back. He's gone for good. You won't... Hello, honey. Yeah. I was just thinking about you. Oh, Dr. Harvey, Betty and I are so unhappy. Won't you take us away with you? Come right inside, sweet, and tell me all about it. All right now, honey, tell me, what's the trouble? It's Pa. He's been here all our lives until we just can't stand it any longer. What do you want to be lying to that little girl for? Me lying? No, I guess I was lying. What are you talking about? You started to do all that. Oh, listen, when you lay off of me and leave me alone. Well, now, don't you worry your little head about it any longer. You mean? I mean that you and I are going away from here. And take Buddy with us? And take Buddy with us. Oh, I can't tell you how happy I am. Don't try. Just run along home, pack your things, bring Buddy back, and as soon as you come back, we'll go. Now, run along, honey. We'll get right back. I won't keep you waiting. We'll be back in no time. Hi, 
I tell you, them circus fellas is all slickers. That fella wasn't on the level. He did me for $50 and the wife's raising cane. I'm for having them arrested. So am I. He's Thank a you. crook, all right. Well, of course, you fellas have no business gambling. But if you want to swear out a warrant... I'll swear out a warrant. He's me, too. too. All, right. With you. all right, then. If you'll come with me, we'll swear out a warrant. And I'll lock them up. Good. Now you're talking. Now you're shut a mouthful. Say, you guys, you better be it fast. Well, what's the matter, kid? My pop went with the rest of the guys to get a... Uh, uh, one of those things to have you arrested with. What's that you're saying, bud? We're all going to be in this. What are you fellas been pulling now? Well, <laughs> Doc, we haven't done anything. We just... Oh, uh, we just had a little Monty game last night. That's all, Doc. Yeah, yeah, well, I told you to lay off of that stuff here, didn't I? Well, we had to get a little dough, didn't we? And besides, you said we'd be out of this town by daylight now, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Where'd you say they went, son? They went to get something to arrest to us, yes. A warrant? Yeah, that's it. But you guys said I'll get it. Well, what are you waiting for, the sheriff? No. Come on, fellas, get past. Let's get out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here we are. going to take you with him. Hmm. You are going to marry Peter Schultz, a good, honest man. That's what you're going to do. Peter, you stay here and see that Mamie don't go nowhere. I go get the license and be right back. Yes, sir, goes. I'll do that. Run inside. Run. the justice of peace and we're going to be married right here and now. What? She's going to marry me. Now quit kidding yourself, Adonis. Where'd you get that idea? Well, uh, her father told me so and I'm not going to be interfered with by nobody. Where's her father now? Well, he's going to get the license and me and me are going to get married. Now listen, Schultz. Why don't you bring her father back here? We can settle this thing right away. Hmm. So you too could run away, huh? Hmm, but I'm gone, huh? Why, well, don't be silly. Here's the Justice of Peace, a sworn officer of the law. Will you keep them here, huh? Sure, Schultz. Now, don't you worry about a thing. I'll see there's no injustice done. Can I depend on it? Absolutely. Run along. All right, then. Okay, Judge, do your stuff. Buddy and Gus will be witnesses. Sure we will, won't we, Gus? Sure, I... Oh, by the way, have you got a ring? Sure thing, Judge, right here. That's good. Now, Miss uh, Mamie Goltz and Mr. John H. Harvey, I'm about to join you in holy wedlock. Hurry, hurry, come back. 
The doctor is here, he's right in your store, right? And he says he's going to marry Mary. I told him, Mary is going to marry me. Yeah. And he said, she ain't. So I come to get you. Come quick. Huh? We go. I should. Now, under the laws of this state, and in the sight of God, I pronounce you man and wife. Come on, let's get going for Qualcomm. Thanks very much, Judge, for your assistance. Now, really, you know, Mr. Harvey, I shouldn't take money for playing a trick on old ghosts. You know, that's pay enough for most any man. <laughs> All right, Judge. <laughs> Goodbye, God. Be happy, Mimi. That's all I want. Come on, let's get going. Mimi, we'll have to run along. So long, Gus. Goodbye. Goodbye, Judge. So long, and good luck to you. <laughs> Goodbye, and good luck to you. Uh, great, eh? You bet. <laughs> There's my daughter. Why, she just got married to a right nice young man. Huh? And if I'm not mistaken, she just started on their honeymoon. <laughs> well, there ain't no man gonna run away with my daughter. Why? Hey. Well, what? I followed him. She's married to him now, and you're not going to stop him. Gang, get out of my way. But your mommy are going to be happy. Yeah. This time I won't get out of your way. Gus! Gus. I didn't do it. <laughs> He always was queer, old chap. And I always know that he'd end up by killing himself. Why, Sheriff, I want to put... There's nothing dishonest about this game. It just takes a little skill and cleverness, that's all. Now, now, Sheriff, now, you just watch the ace. That's all you have to do. Now, keep your mind on the ace. Now, do you think you could find it? No, I certainly can. Well, where is it? Right there. And would you back your judgment, uh, you know, up to a $10 bill on that? No, yeah, you certainly will. Well, put up your money. There you are. Now, let's see if you win. It isn't that one. It isn't that one. So it must be that one. <laughs> the sheriff wins $10. Now, there you are, sheriff. You see, you don't pick it out if you were as clever as him. Is there anything dishonest about this, Sheriff? Well, I don't see anything wrong about this game. I'd be willing to stay here and play it all night. Why, sure you would. Come on, I'll go here again for 50. Sure. The Sheriff's gonna play 50 more. Yeah, I heard him. He likes this game, don't you? You better do. Yeah. Yeah, well, now, watch the ace, Sheriff. Now, where is it, Sheriff? There it is. How much have you got there? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Uh, I'm going to be in on that. Right there. Uh, there's there's a lot of money down there too, on that same card. Well, that's the ace, gentlemen, so I guess I have to pay you all off. <laughs> One, two, this 20, 30, 40. 